During this segment of our course, we will deal with the other basic type of gearbox now in use at many plants, the right angle single reduction gearbox. Here is the gearbox with which we'll be working in this course. It is called a right angle down gearbox, since one of the shafts protrudes through the bottom and the other through the side, as you can see. This is a graphic illustration of the gearbox you were just looking at. It is a cutaway side view, enabling you to view all of the internal parts in the actual positions they occupy. We'll show you each of the parts, tell you what it does, and give you its name. The name right angle is derived from the position of the shafts. As you can see from the illustration, the two shafts are at right angles to each other. It's called single reduction because there is only one reduction in speed, from the first to the second gear. However, a right angle gearbox can be constructed to reduce, increase, or not change the speed at all. It all depends on the two gears, as you learned earlier. Now let's examine the parts which make up a typical gearbox. To begin with, this is a cutaway view of the case itself. The case is divided into two parts. The top half is shown here. It is removed during the disassembly of the gearbox, as you will be shown later in this course. The bottom half is outlined here. The two halves are bolted together with sealant as a gasket. The dotted lines on the left side and the upper center of the gearbox indicate the position of two inspection plates. When we move, you are given a relatively clear view of the gears. This is the high-speed shaft on a horizontal plane in this particular gearbox. The pinion gear is mounted on the high-speed shaft, as is always the case in a speed reducer or increaser. The low-speed shaft is in the vertical position in this gearbox, and as we mentioned earlier, it protrudes through the bottom of the gear case. On other models, it would protrude through the top or the side, depending on the intended use of the equipment. The gear wheel, the largest of the two gears, is mounted on the low-speed shaft, as shown. The gears in this particular gearbox are the spiral bevel type, as shown here. First, let's examine the parts which support the low-speed shaft and its assembly. The top or covered end of the low-speed shaft is called the blind end, while the bottom, which protrudes through the case, is the open end. The names are quite self-explanatory. There are three separate bearings which support the low-speed shaft, one of them positioned near the bottom, at the open end, and the other two at the blind end. This is a roller bearing, installed primarily to prevent radial or side-to-side -side movements of the low-speed shaft during operation. The radial bearing is mounted in an internal fit of the part, shown here in red. The part is called a bearing carrier. The bearing carrier is bolted to the case with a gasket, as shown. A standpipe, identified here, is incorporated into the design of the bearing carrier. We'll tell you more about the standpipe in a few minutes. The outer race of the radial bearing is held in the bearing carrier by the inner bearing retainer, as shown here. The retainer is bolted to the top of the bearing carrier. Underneath the radial bearing is a lock washer. And under the lock washer is a part called an umbrella, which is screwed onto the low-speed shaft. The umbrella and the lock washer combine to lock the inner race of the bearing against the bottom of the gear wheel. However, the umbrella also serves another purpose. The umbrella works in conjunction with the standpipe to prevent leakage of lubricant along the low-speed shaft and out through the open end. The umbrella, which is tightly secured to the shaft, channels the lubricant into the bottom of the bearing carrier. From there, it runs back into the bottom of the case and is picked up by the oil pump. Thus, the umbrella and standpipe serve as a very effective oil seal on this gearbox. On the blind end of the low-speed shaft are two angular contact bearings, 
mounted back to back to counter any axial or radial movement of the shaft, as shown by the arrows. The two bearings are separated by spacers, as shown here. As you can see, there are outer, center, and inner spacers. By looking closely, you'll see that there are actually two center spacers, one each for the inner and outer races of the two bearings. The two angular contact bearings we've been showing you are mounted in the low-speed bearing cartridge, as shown here in red. The cartridge is bolted to the case with a gasket. Two lock nuts are used to secure the bearings against the shoulder on the low-speed shaft. There is also a lock washer installed between the lock nuts. This is the outer bearing retainer. It is designed to retain or hold the two angular contact bearings in position in the bearing cartridge. The bearing retainer secures the outer races of the bearings, and the lock nuts clamp the inner races. There is also another purpose for the retainer. It is used as a base for the oil pump, shown here. As you can see, the pump is bolted to the bearing retainer with a gasket. The pump shaft is then connected to the low-speed shaft with a coupling. Don't forget, however, that lubrication systems may vary considerably from one gearbox to another. Now let's examine the high-speed shaft and its associated parts. It also has a blind end and an open end, as did the low-speed shaft. The primary difference is that the high-speed shaft is in a horizontal position in this particular gearbox. As with the low-speed shaft, there are three bearings used to support the high-speed shaft during operation of the gearbox. They are positioned as shown here. The blind end of the shaft is supported by a radial bearing. It is designed to prevent excessive radial movements of the shaft, as shown by the arrow. The bearing is mounted in the high-speed bearing cartridge, which holds all three of the bearings on the high-speed shaft. This cartridge may also be used to extract the entire high-speed assembly, as you will see later. The outer race of the radial roller bearing is held securely in place in the bearing cartridge by the inner bearing retainer. The retainer is bolted to the end of the cartridge. The inner race of the bearing is clamped in place by the high-speed gear, as you can see. The gear, in turn, is secured with a lock nut and lock washer on the end of the high-speed shaft. On the open end of the high-speed shaft are the other two bearings we mentioned a few moments ago. As with the low-speed shaft, they are angular contact bearings mounted back-to-back to, back to counter either axial or radial movement of the shaft during operation. The bearings are separated with four bearing spacers, one inner, two center, and one outer, as shown in the illustration. As we mentioned a few moments ago, these two bearings are also mounted in the high-speed bearing cartridge, as was the radial roller bearing. They are clamped securely against the shaft shoulder by the lock nut and lock washer being pointed out here. Look closely, and you will see that they come in contact with the inner race of the bearings. Outside the lock nut and lock washer is an umbrella, very similar to that on the open end of the low-speed shaft. It is intended as an oil slinger to prevent oil leakage along the shaft. We told you earlier in the course that the entire high-speed cartridge assembly could be extracted from the gearbox. The assembly we were talking about is shown here. It is made up of the high-speed shaft and its three bearings and their bearing spacers, the high-speed gear and its lock nut and lock washer, the inner bearing retainer, the outer lock nut, lock washer, and umbrella, and, of course, they are all held together by the bearing cartridge. The only remaining major part on this gearbox is this high-speed bearing retainer. It serves to clamp the outer races of the two angular contact bearings in place. And it also works in conjunction with the umbrella we showed you earlier as an oil sealing element. The retainer is bolted to the case through the bearing cartridge with a gasket. There 
is also another sealing element on the open end of the high-speed shaft, which is machined into the bearing retainer. It is the labyrinth seal, shown in red. This serves as a secondary sealing element to backstop the action of the umbrella. That completes our brief examination of the component parts of a typical, right-angle, single-reduction gearbox. As you should know by now, there is a wide variety of gearboxes on the market, each with its own little variation built in by the manufacturer. However, our look at the parts and nomenclature of this gearbox should be a big help to you in working on similar models at your plant. We'll be back to show you the disassembly of this gearbox after you complete exercise number five in your workbook.